Hey guys, you ever have that problem where you have a no money? And maybe your home is the alleyway? Uh-oh. Well then you should use swag bucks to earn some extra cash to buy things like video <laughs> games? Video games? And burritos. I can't get enough burritos. You can earn rewards by taking research surveys, watching videos, and even playing games. Be sure to click the link in the description down below to start earning extra cash and gift cards. And lastly, I want to thank Swagbucks for sponsoring this video. Let's get on with the show. Man, there's never any new games to play. I already beat Zelda. I already put like a hundred hours into Monster Hunter World. And I beat that Tingle game like a year ago already. When's Papa Hammy gonna catch me a solid and get a new game? Ripened Tingle's Balloon Trip of Love The sequel to freshly picked Tingle's Rosy Rupee Land The game was never officially translated and brought to the States or Europe It stars everyone's favorite quirky Zelda character Tingle in another zany adventure I mean just look at these commercials and tell me you don't want to play this game Tingle Lucky for us though, the game has been fan translated, so we can bear witness to the majesty that is another Tingle game. Tingle! He's back, baby! Well, kind of. If you've forgotten the lore of Tingle, which, I mean, it's like, can you really forget the lore? It's just always up there. You'll remember that Tingle is an average 35 year old, jobless, unpopular, poor, and of course, single man. That is before he becomes the actual Tingle. This character here is a character you can name. So one day we're just sitting around and an ad comes on the TV for a series of books, Ripening Hero's Love Journey. Do my eyes deceive me a series of romance novels starring a buff Tingle? That's the dream! Wait, that's the, that's the dream? Oh my god. How far have we as a species fallen? Can we even... Come back. That's the dream! He even gets the girl in the end? Oh my god, and they're on sale! So we order the book and it arrives nearly instantaneously. Yeah, Ting, I'm sure it's fine. Don't don't question that or anything. So we plop down and immediately begin reading the book and Uh-oh. I mean I like that ominous tone! Oh! Oh no! The blood! It's coming for us! The blood! So we wake up in a totally different place. Apparently, we live on a farm and now we have grandparents. Nice! Right away, you'll notice that this game plays completely different than the first game. Remember how in Tingle's Rosy Rupee Land, you'd run around, hire bodyguards, get into fights, and money was basically the reason for existing because... It was your life! Well, none of that matters in this one, because this is a point-and-click adventure game a la Pop Pot or King's Quest. That's right, the way you control this game is by using the stylus to click on things. Interacting with objects, talking to people, everything is controlled on the bottom screen with the touch controls. This begs the ultimate question. What? It's honestly kind of crazy when you think about it, because Tingle takes place canonically in the Zelda universe. So theoretically, we're playing a point-and-click Zelda game, but it's about Tingle. It's just weird. So again, we wake up on the farm, and we have to gather up some useful items to progress. There's a hammer on the nightstand and a few other items we're going to need. We head outside and talk to Granny, who gives us the Tingle suit so we can look the part. First, change into this. You put on the green tights! They're a staple of the series. Self-aware alert, the game is self-aware! 
so now the adventure officially begins! Oh, I gotta do chores? Oh. The way this game works is actually pretty simple. It usually involves you getting to a new page in the book, exploring a bit, finding new items for puzzles you're going to have to complete, figuring out said puzzles, and then progressing the story. In this first page, we simply have to get the screwdriver and fix the transportation machine in order to start our journey towards the city. Oh wait, did I, did I not mention that? So we're trying to get to the city because there's gonna be this huge dance and Tingle wants to dance with some hot ladies. No, no, I'm not joking. That's actually, that's literally the story. So after we fix up the transportation machine, it's go time, baby. Love me up. Now I will say it's a little weird that I'm being lowered into a device. I mean, what exactly does this thing do again? Uh, well, that doesn't sound good. What's happening, Grandpa? So we end up at some fortune teller's house, but first we have to clean ourselves off because our landing was less than satisfactory. Well, we're a little dirty, but that's no problem because we can clean ourselves off and hey look, it looks like there's a fortune teller. Once we meet up with the fortune teller, she offers us a free reading and foretells that Tingle will arrive at the ball and dance with the princess. That's right, BB! Tingle's moving on up in the world! So is there, there a fortune about Tingle becoming buff in there too? Because uh, right now he's not exactly looking the part. So we have to make some tea for the fortune teller because she's mysteriously ill or something. And we do that by solving this flower petal puzzle. Then we have to help this scarecrow kid named Kakashi. Throughout the game, we're actually going to collect multiple characters that will join us on our journey. First, there's Kakashi the Scarecrow, then there's Buriki the Robot, and then there's the cowardly lion named Lion. It's sad they ran out of good names. Wait, so we collect a Scarecrow, a Robot, and a Lion, and then we walk on a yellow, yellow brick road. This is Wizard of Oz. It's freaking Wizard of Oz. Nintendo, you got us. You pulled one over on us. Tingle's balloon trip of love is like Wizard of Oz fan fiction canon in the Zelda universe. I don't even know why I play games anymore, honestly. So after completing the first few pages and getting the other party members, we can now use them to solve different puzzles. Kakashi can crawl into small holes and use a piece of straw to, well, use it. Buriki can scan and analyze things to give you some insight and kick things. And Lion can speak to animals and use his super strength! A lot of puzzles use these mechanics actually, and they're interwoven into the story and puzzles really well. You'd be surprised at how often these mechanics are useful in a variety of different situations to progress. Like Lion can use his super strength to push over this tree to make a bridge, or even lift heavy objects for the party, and Kakashi can use his straw to fish something out from this grate. So after the fortune teller, we make our way through the farmer's cornfields. Oh my god! Is that a female? Tingle play cool! Nice job, buddy. Well, let's forget about that for now, but here we can collect the slingshot, one of the more important items in the game. Uh oh! Kakashi, watch out! Put him down, he's a good boy! He's got a medallion and he's really proud of it! Take this, you foul demon crows! I did it! And then we find some buff squirrels, and, and I realize now that mentioning and then subsequently glossing over that buff squirrel thing is pretty weird. 
Eventually, we find and fix ourselves up a train so we can travel in style. But it eventually runs out of fuel and we need to stop at this village to refuel again. No problem, just a quick step. <gasps> Another girl! Dingle, I swear to God, just play cool, man. Don't be a creeper. Don't look at me like that, pervert. <laughs> okay, next time you got this for sure, man. Man, Tingle is like the embodiment of women repellent. And I know a lot about attracting women. I've been playing a lot of Super Seducer lately. This is the definition of creepy, the kind of stuff that's going to get you arrested, thrown out of places by security, and in all kinds of problems. So don't do it. Oh. Hey, so you know how this game has been essentially a point-and-click adventure game up until now? Well, it's about to get a whole lot weirder. So we end up going into the village, but everyone's afraid of Tingle. Look at this. They're all just jealous, okay? He looks good. He can be sexy. They're all just body shaming him. What are we, what are we supposed to do? Nobody will even talk to us, let alone look us in the eyes. Okay, so this is Love Ya, and he explains to us that we may really be a weird pervert and may need to adjust our strategy a bit to get these girls to like us. Okay, fine. So you're following so far, right? So here's what we do. We go up to women and we use this new skill called Love Push on them. Yes, Love Push. N never forget that. Which brings us into this dating sim minigame in which we try to guess the woman's interests by giving them gifts to make them like us more. Oh, I see, it was it was very simple, because you see, if a girl doesn't like you, just give them gifts, and eventually they'll like you, or at least tolerate you. What is this game? It's a Wizard of Oz parody dating sim, canonically in the Zelda universe. Hey, nobody asked you, man, okay? So now we have to give gifts to basically every woman in the game and track their likes and dislikes in our girl diary. Yes, our girl diary. <laughs> A diary to track the progress you're making with women. It's it's so strange to say that out loud, and realistically, it gets even more ridiculous later when another mechanic is introduced. Let me explain. So at this part of the story, our train has broken down because there was a leak and we need to go get more fuel. So we end up stopping here at the village, but we need to love push the ladies because they won't even talk to us, let alone look at us. One of those ladies is the owner of this farm plot. We need to plant some seeds here to grow these things called gas apples to get more fuel. Except for this guy right here stole that plot from us right under our little red nose. The ball's on this kid. Oh, his name is Baron Nimi, by the way. Well, he'll get his sometime, probably in some sort of dance-related competition. This is when the fortune teller's sister gives us the balloon. Ah, you see, it's all come full circle now. The name of the game is Balloon Trip of Love. So what does the balloon do? It allows us to, and I'm not joking, travel through time. Oh good, we can travel through time, good. Uh, we can travel through time. So now we have the power to go back in time to specific pages and do certain things out of order or give ourselves more chances than we should have to complete things. So you know those ladies that had bad impressions of us? Who cares? We can go back in time and woo them with presents to make them like us. Ha 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 you want a literal throne? Good day, I am pig. So now we can abuse our time travel powers to go back in time and give gifts to women that don't really like us. And you know what that means? We gotta spend a lot of money. And just guess who sells all those presents. It's Love Ya! He's sitting over here making bank off of us. I've had to go through these dungeon places like a billion times just to get the money to buy the presents to seduce the women. You know, this actually brings up a good point. This game is deceptively long and a lot of that has to do with the time traveling. Once you beat the main story of the game, you have to go back and do a lot of the side quests in the game and luckily those are all tracked in this handy notebook in your inventory. 
there's a bunch of optional quests on every page, and most of them unlock only after you've completed the story on said pages and come back through time travel. So the time travel does have its limitations. You have to beat the main story of the page, and then you can time travel back to the end of the story of that page. It doesn't let you just replay and get a second chance at every part of the game. One cool thing though is that some of the quests even have ripple effects throughout the entire game, so you have to travel to multiple pages to complete them. Like in this main quest where you're at a literal DMV and need to get a passport. You can use this newspaper that has your picture in it, but it won't actually work for your passport photo because it's an artist's rendition, not a photograph. No problem, just time travel back to the village and do the interview yourself and BAM! New newspaper. Time travel makes things so convenient. Who'd have even thought that even? Oh, and did I mention this game is weird? I mean, there's a literal Cupid running around selling items of questionable gift-giving ethics. A uh, bra? Yeah, hold on. Let me just give this character I barely know a bra. It's no big deal and probably not even weird. But who am I to say? Maybe that's just next-level gift-giving. Like I've said before, these single games have always been like treasure troves of weird characters. Like this guy here, Sigal. He follows the party around for most of the game and tries to stop Tingle from getting to the dance. Hey, that disguise isn't fooling anyone. This guy here who will break the fourth wall and spoil the game for you, if you want him to. Or even all these villagers from this place in the game called Liar Village. They always say the opposite of what they mean. Ice Cream Man? Or Spy? And hey, the map guy's back, and so is this ninja. I'm glad there's at least some continuity there, otherwise everyone was gonna be mega lost. And hey, this guy kinda looks like... Someone I know. So after we gas back up our vehicle, play through this mine area that actually has some pretty cool minigame concepts going on, we finally get our passport after solving everyone else's problems in this harbor town, and now we're off to the main city. Oh my god, we made it! We finally made it to the city where the dance is taking place. So we're in the city now, and we have to figure out how we're gonna talk to the king and meet the princess. This guy here is very helpful by letting us use his telescope to spy on the princess. It's not weird, it's not weird, it's weird. Fortunately for us though, we catch a glimpse of a plot, thus justifying our perverted ways. The princess is poisoned! Man, that means the dance is cancelled? Okay, but priorities, priorities, get your head in the game! So now we have to go on this massive time traveling quest to make an elixir that will cure her. <laughs> oh yeah, that's our end baby. We're gonna get into this castle and cure the princess. And now, finally, it's our chance to make a good impression on the princess! Dang it, Tingle! So we have to explain what's going on a little bit, yada yada yada- Love push! I gotta get this princess to like me, guys, I gotta fulfill the prophecy! The prophecy is what matters here, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna give her emperor O's. Uh oh. What kind of low class item is this? Father, tell me this is a bad dream. I'm not gonna let this get me down. Tingle's more of a third or fifth impression kind of guy. So after we cure the princess and love push her so she'll at least talk to us, we complete the page and wake up the next day. The day of the dance. Wait. What? What's wrong? So something's up. Uh oh. Turns out there's some lookalikes out there trashing the city, <laughs> and now we're in prison. Now we're never gonna get to the. De <laughs> oh, you sly devil, you! I mean, there's no question about it. This is pretty OP when you think about it. So we go back in time and love push the female prison guard so that she lets us out of prison the night of the dance. So now we can sneak into the castle ballroom and get to that dance. <laughs> oh my God! It's Sigal! Don't you have anything better to do? Just let Tingle dance, man! Oh boy, here we go! Sigal is actually one of the few actual bosses in the entire game, and bosses are a little different in this game, as you can imagine. Sigal has a bunch of different moves that he can do, and your job is to counter them with your characters and then capitalize on the situation. So it's kind of like a puzzle battle. There's even a section of the game that's essentially a big parody of Final Fantasy that does a lot of this stuff too. Come on, Lion! You gotta protect the group! You gotta protect Tangle! So after we pummel Sigale into submission, we sneak into the castle and get to the dance. 
But things keep getting worse and worse as our companions have to sacrifice themselves to get us there. No, 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 not Kakashi, no! <laughs> Anyways, now Tingle's depressed, and so am I, because Kakashi's gone. But uh, hey, we made it. We got there, buddy. <laughs> now it all comes down to this. All the hard work, all the time traveling, we hit the dance floor, and we need to scope out all the ladies and dance with them. <laughs> My arch rival Baron Nimi, of course. Let's dance! Go, Tingle! Get those ladies! So, uh, uh-oh. Apparently, I have to get all the hearts. And I'll be honest, I guess I should have realized that because this lady beforehand said I had to dance really well with four ladies before I could even dance with the princess. So every time you have to dance with a new partner, you have to face off against Baron Nimi again in a dance competition. Then and only then do you get a chance at dancing with the ladies. And if they don't like you, it's Bye Bye Tingle. Well, lucky for us, we're goddamn time travelers, so get f So now we're at the part of the game where we have to go back and finish everything we've neglected because if you don't, you don't get the fancy 100% ending. Okay, fine. So we go around and woo all the ladies and get all their hearts in our girl diaries and then head back to the dance. Once we've successfully danced with all the ladies, we can finally approach the princess and try to ask her for a dance. But trickery! It turns out it's not the princess, but instead this character named Witch! Ha uh, 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 oh, clever. Witch is an actual witch, and she was the person who pulled us into the book in the first place. Oh, and, and our companions are all good, so that's good. Now all that's left to do is face off against Witch in the ultimate final battle! Oh my god, there's all kinds of stuff happening! I wasn't ready! I wasn't ready! Witch has a bunch of different attacks that she can do, and you have to be really quick with your slingshot in order to repel all of them. And this is this is what your slingshot looks like now. This form is so annoying, I can't do anything against it! My hands are getting so tired! Oh! Oh my god, did we do it? Oh, feels good! I think we have to execute her now. Do it! Once you beat Witch, you're transported to a grassy field where you say hello to a lot of the major characters you've met throughout the game and say goodbye to them. All is right in the world, and it's time to go home. But obviously most of the characters want Tingle to stay because he gave them a lot of presents. But the prophecy, it hasn't been filled yet. So we have to ask for one last dance with someone we like. I choose the princess, I spent a lot of money on her. So the final dance begins, and of course, the tornado appears. This is it! This is the moment we've all been waiting for! Are we strong enough to stay? Or do we have to go? Uh, whoops. I must have forgot something. Alright, let's try that again! So if you've 100%ed the game, you actually get a chance to stay or leave. <laughs> now that's what I'm talking about. Tingle fulfilled the prophecy and he's with the princess forever.
Now all that's left to do is see what we get for 100% completing the game. Good day, I am Pig. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button and click that alert bell if you want to be notified as to when I upload videos like these. Big thanks to Swagbucks again for sponsoring this video. Check that stuff out in the description down below. If you want to see more Tingle, then I suggest you go watch the full playthrough of this game on my second channel, which you can click right here. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.